Hey, welcome to the Lux channel. It's a quick uh, once again uh, an update on uh, Toffee Data Center development. Uh, yesterday I shot a video episode on uh, uh, tracking live uh, TCP sessions where in which you can uh, uh, track uh, inbound and outbound uh, TCP sessions uh, so that uh, in case if there is any kind of malicious activity in your uh, uh, van optimization channels so whether it is internal or uh, some kind of rogue application doing it or uh, maybe it is some insider activity you can track the same and uh, besides uh, I also discussed about uh, tracking uh, various uh, application uh, specific performance so I just uh, supported the same and uh, I did a very quick uh, prototype uh, support uh, it may still have some incomplete stuff and uh, bugs and other stuff so I thought uh, let me take a quick a video and uh, show a quick glimpse of this uh, new feature so this is uh, uh, the new graph which it uh, generates uh, this it uh, shows as uh, network applications as you can see here so this is the yesterday's one where we can track the TCP sessions and uh, this is all about optimization so if you go here uh, with which we can track application uh, uh, specific uh, data uh, uh, transfers so as a part of that uh, uh, currently I supported uh, HTTP and that also coupled with uh, uh, squid port like 8080 or something like that so uh, both port 80 and 8080 I consider as HTTP and this can be further uh, tweaked down and uh, SSL uh, like HTTPS uh, is tracked as HTTPS and after that uh, DNS and VoIP and things like that so VoIP may include uh, uh, Skype, SIP protocols, uh, RTP as well as uh, uh, GTalk, anything uh, can be put under uh, the category called uh, VoIP. So with that uh, we get this kind of a curve. So I can show you a very quick uh, demo. Uh, this is the desktop. So I have a, a test video file in the host system. So I, if I download the same it comes through all this WAN opt and WAN emulator devices to this uh, test vm desktop so if i uh, do wget uh, it comes uh, to the same uh, if i do wget uh, it comes to the same and uh, once again we can go to this van out device and if you refresh uh, after some time uh, uh, it will start generating the graphs uh, you should understand uh, it once in a while sinks you know uh, into the RRT database it is not something uh, it sinks uh, you know every second or even within every second so it unnecessarily uh, takes up lot of CPU load if you think about uh, PF sensor router uh, they don't even uh, store anything else they just show some instantaneous graphs and other than that they gen generally warn you that this takes a lot of CPU resources so same thing even applicable uh, for uh, Toffee as well but having said that it will stay in uh, RRD uh, database uh, so it can be used uh, in future for any kind of archival purposes if you think about van opt graphs it uh, can show reports like uh, uh, you know hourly uh, daily weekly monthly and things like that whereas in the case of other charts uh, I have not yet supported that uh, uh, you know tracker tool uh, because it has to render all those uh, corresponding graphs so if you go here as part of applications you can see here uh, it started this uh, curve and uh, since it is uh, wget uh, gets this uh, file via http uh, uh, protocol it shows in that uh, curve uh, uh, you know showing as you know http data so it shows uh, in uh, megabits per second again you should understand once you start the operation it may have some kind of lag uh, there is someone who even uh, questions uh, questioned about the same that why there is like so and so curve generated in the graphs so is it uh, having some bugs or it has any adequate data it is not getting fed maybe it may have also bugs because i just uh, started supporting all this stuff but having said that uh, one should also understand that uh, it gets this it collects this data and once in a while it flushes to the rrd database and from the database whenever you refresh once in a while it you know picks up and shows you so there is a sort of a you know lag it's not absolute real time because if you do absolute real time it takes a lot of cpu resources uh, which is which can be used for optimizing your data rather than you know showing uh, all these live statistics so you can see here 
uh, it is getting this curve and in this time uh, when it is doing the same if we uh, go to any place like this uh, let's open a new, uh, youtube uh, video uh, one of my uh, favorite uh, uh, channels is tech one <laughs> and uh, so let us do a test play of this video and do a c cooperation so anytime you do the c cooperation it is this exact time where it gets the data it is not after uh, it is done the seek it may have something in the buffer you can see here it has that prefetch buffer so it has the data already and uh, it may not you know consume much bandwidth so this is the reason often in uh, various uh, demos including the one which i did uh, youtube uh, toffee data center as well as uh, amazon uh, prime uh, with uh, toffee data center i often do that seek operation because it overloads the system so if i do that random seek here and there so what happens is it has to pull a lot of data aggressively so if you refresh here after some time you can see here there is this uh, blue curve and uh, this corresponds to https but in general uh, once i stop that file download and uh, i just leave uh, as it is you may have a lot of https data because as you know uh, the internet is saturated with almost every website with https uh, enabled uh, sites except <laughs> the toffee project and the linux channel because i'm i'm not sure uh, is it going to give any benefit whether it is uh, uh, served via https or http because uh, http is good to go and uh, i don't see any point encrypting my website data mm. at any cases so you can see here this sort of you know curve it generates so maybe i need to add like others so that anything else which is not uh, categorized uh, can be showed as others it can include some ping data and it can include anything else so as a part of that you can see here there is this uh, wipe data as well so i can do one more experiment i can just close everything and uh, i can just stop this uh, file download momentarily let me just stop the same and uh, i can do a, a sort of you know google hangouts call uh, between uh, one of my uh, gmail account to my other gmail account since i cannot show the live capture of gmail account i'm not going to show those portions in that uh, uh, video edit uh, the composite video edit so that uh, i can show only the graph part and i can just mask that you know website uh, opening parts so uh, i am uh, opening uh, this firefox browser and uh, i am going to my other mail account which is uh, kiran dot uh, uh, cyber pro i'm just uh, narrating since i cannot show this on screen and uh, yeah this is open and uh, in the desktop i can go here and i can open uh, gmail and i can place a, a call uh, since i don't have a webcam i can place a just you know voice call uh yeah i can just place a voice call and uh, if i do a voice call yeah you can see here uh, uh hello answer yeah yeah so this part i'm going to enable the same uh, because it is safe so in uh, both systems you can see here uh, it is uh, communicating to and fro it may cause some kind of feedback because it has to transfer this you know both directions so now we can uh, track this so you can see here uh, uh, let me just do a mute or something because it is causing some kind of an echo uh, here is my microphone let me keep this away but still we need some kind of test data so i'm uh, enabling the same so if you see here uh, there is some amount of wipe activity uh, you can see here this orange one is wipe and uh, if i refresh uh, you can see here there is a small uh, curve over here uh, since uh, it gets that scaling it has uh, recently uh, you know had lot of http data we cannot see that you know orange curve so this is the reason i may create some kind of uh, uh, you know tabs over here so that you can selectively uh, monitor which application you would like to monitor so that uh, if everything is overlapped it is difficult to monitor in a situation like this 
so what we can do temporarily is uh, we can go to history and we can purge all the historical data and uh, we can do a fresh capture so that uh, we don't have any other open applications there may be some stray dns packets and uh, stuff like that may get communicated but uh, apart from that mostly it should contain uh, no VoIP data and as well as HTTPS data because uh, still our uh, uh, Google Mail window is open so it will have some amount of HTTPS you know, uh, transfers so you can see here now uh, the curve is little uh, different you have this orange curve on top of this blue curve uh, so this way uh, we don't have issues like before uh, getting uh, you know hidden because of scaling up and stuff like that so once i create some kind of categorization and i can do some kind of selective uh, uh, options uh, with that we can see only that particular chart uh, like dns alone http alone and things like that but for now we have to just bear with the same so so i can uh, do one more thing i can just stop the call and if i do uh, again uh, uh, the HTTPS uh, file download. Let me do it for a few seconds and cancel it. And uh, if I uh, go back here, and you can see here the, again this uh, dominating green curve over here. So this happens uh, if you enable everything. You can see here even more interesting. This bottom chart has this green curve and it has you know intersecting with that orange curve so this happens because of the scale up issues uh, if you extrapolate everything on top of each other <laughs> and this is not an issue in case if you do selective uh, graphs for that application alone so that is something i need to think about it in the future uh, how i can just uh, segregate and then give that great visual experience so that we can do analysis and uh, please bear in mind whatever you visualize over here this is not uh, i'm uh, capturing in that optimized tunnel this is something before optimization because this is what is the raw data whatever we are getting it uh, which is uh, meant to get optimized in that uh, uh, van link so whatever you see here as well as whatever you see as a part of tcp sessions uh, is captured uh, in the place before even gets touched okay before even gets this uh, particular data gets uh, van optimized so once it gets van optimized it gets completely changed it it just amalgamates into a huge stream so that is not a place where i need to take the stats uh, and uh, that is the reason i need to take even before i touch those packets so this is something i would like to mention because again i got some questions uh, in the mail i thought let me just mention about the same so this is an uh, uh, stats we are collecting it before uh, it is anywhere touched and on the other side which is like uh, this you know van to lan this is after it gets processed after it gets uncompressed uh, and it is getting that legitimate uh, packets uh, which is meant for van network so that is where again i am capturing so in both the directions it is not uh, something uh, tracked in the van optimized channel it is either after it is getting uh, uncompressed or either it is before it is getting compressed in a case like LAN to WAN, it is before it is getting optimized. In a case like WAN to LAN, it is after it gets uncompressed. I get this, you know, stats. I pull the stats and plot it over here, whether it is TCP sessions or network applications. But whereas in the case of optimization, it is a complete uh, big picture. What happens before versus what happens after and uh, in terms of bytes, in terms of packets and uh, stuff like that. So there are a lot of things and uh, this is also a part of learning curve. And obviously, <laughs> if anyone uh, consult as a part of paid support, it takes a lot of time to explain all this jargon and uh, make them comfortable uh, to understand what they are really dealing about because this is not something like something like hard coded uh, uh, stuff that they need to learn some specs or something we have complete freedom we have complete creativity it all depends uh, what you would like to create as a part of uh, a van opt uh, appliance or van opt solution as i said many times so this can be a sort of uh, a component within your sd van fabric a cloud infrastructure fabric or it can be a part of your uh, 
product offering uh, you may have certain products you may have vpn products and you may have some firewall products and along with that you can also create a uh, van opt appliance uh, uh, you know series of products so there in which you can use toffy as a part of framework to build custom van opt devices uh, uh, for your uh, you know customer offerings so with this i would like to conclude this video hope you guys loved watching the same uh, if you have any questions or if you would like to discuss anything in personal uh, being touch via mail thank you have a nice day bye bye